When you don't follow lighting ratios, you are literally guessing at how much light you need for your shot. Sometimes you get lucky, it looks good, but lighting ratios are just not that hard to understand. All you're doing is comparing how much brighter one light source is from another, and that's it. For example, this is a one-to-one -one lighting ratio here on my face where the key and the fill are exactly the same amount of light. So if you like the look of this lighting style, you can copy it every single time by making sure the amount of light on your key and fill are exactly the same. And this is a two-to-one lighting ratio where the key light is two times brighter than my fill light. A four to one lighting ratio is where the key light is four times brighter than the fill light. Eight to one, eight times as bright as the fill. 16 to one, 16 times brighter. And then finally, 32 to one, 32 times brighter than the fill. The reason why these numbers are so particular is because they relate directly to the stops of light. With each stop of light, there is double the amount of light that comes through the lens. So if you open your lens from f4 to f2.8, you've increased the stop by one, and you've let in twice as much light through the lens. If you open your lens from f4 to f2, that is a two stop difference, and you've let in four times the amount of light. So back to my first example, if the key light is zero stops brighter than my fill light, that means the light on both sides of my face is even, which is a one to one lighting ratio. If the key light is one stop brighter than my fill light, that means there is two times the amount of light on my key side versus my fill side, which is a two to one lighting ratio. If the key light is two stops brighter than my fill light, then that means there is four times the amount of light on my key side versus my fill side, which is a four to one lighting ratio. So if you keep going, a three stop difference means an eight to one lighting ratio. A four stop difference equals a 16 to one lighting ratio. A five stop difference equals a 32 two to one lighting ratio, and the six stop difference equals a 64 to one lighting ratio. If you're ever confused about the conversions, come back to this part of the video. And also let me know down in the comments which one of these lighting ratios is your favorite. My personal favorite is the three stop difference, which is the eight to one lighting ratio, just because it gives enough contrast on the face, but it doesn't completely crush out the shadows in the fill. Now, how do you measure in general how much light there is in an image, especially on the key side versus the fill? The first way is to use an incident light meter. So in this example, my friend Matt is going to hold it up to my face and point the little white ball at the sources of light on both sides of my face, and it'll measure how much light is falling on both sides of the face, and it'll give me an f-stop number. So for this shot, my key side came out to be f2.8, and my fill side came out to be f1.4, which is a two-stop difference, which means a four-to-one lighting ratio. However, most of us don't have a light meter handy. The second way is by using false colors, which measures the amount of light throughout an image and displaying it using different colors. Colors. There's a scale that goes from 0 IRE, which means pure black, to 100 IRE, which means pure white. If we take a look at the same shot using the false color overlay in DaVinci Resolve, the key side of my face reads about 60 IRE, and my fill side reads about 15 IRE. You take these two numbers and you divide them. 16 divided by 15 equals 4. The key side is 4 times as bright as my fill side, a 4 to 1 lighting ratio, which is a two-stop difference. Lighting ratios aren't hard at all, and once you fully understand it, you can figure out which ratio you like the best and light like that every single time. Using false colors, you can take screenshots from your favorite films or your TV shows and see what type of lighting ratios they're working with and try to copy it. So this first screenshot is from the film Arrival shot by Bradford Young. With the false color overlay, I can see that the hand is around 20 IRE and the light at the top of the frame is around 60 IRE. And it gradually just softens to the bottom of the frame at 30 IRE. We're just going to take a look at the brightest part of the image, which is around 60 60 IRE and dividing that by 20 to get a 3 to 1 lighting ratio. Now 3 to 1 isn't on our chart, but it is right in between 4 to 1 and 2 to 1. So that means the key light is one and a half stops brighter than the hand. So with that in mind, we're going to set up our shot to shoot out this window in my house. The camera that I'm using is the Canon C70 shooting at C-Log2, which has a native ISO of 800. The f-stop that I want to shoot at is f2.8, which means that at f2.8, I want my false colors to read 60 IRE in the brightest part of the window. If it's over 60 IRE, then we're going to use ND filters to stop down to 60 IRE. We're going to put diffusion paper over the window to soften up the natural sunlight and use an eight stop ND filter to stop down to 60 IRE. So that's my hand right there. Okay, so right now we're looking at the pink part, right? The pink part of the image on the uh, false colors. That's at 60 
IRE, around 60 IRE. And we want to have, we like that because that's kind of like what the arrival scene looks like as well, that shot. And then we have that gradient. And theirs is a top to bottom gradient from like 60 IRE to about 40-ish IRE. But this one's just more of a left to right gradient because we're using the sun. But then the hand is the most important is the silhouette of the hand. The hand should be at around 15-ish IRE, which this is kind of, kind of 60, or kind of at 15 IRE. So that's a four to one ratio. So 60 divided by 15 is four, four to one. So a four to one ratio, it is two stops under. This was an easy setup because the sunlight was already setting and it's sort of angled at the window. So we get this nice gradient of light going across the window. And then in the color grade, I tried to match the look as close as possible. And then also bringing down the exposures to match exactly how they shot it in Arrival. And you can see it's pretty close because we were able to know the exact exposure levels, the exact amount of light that they used in the movie and copy it almost exactly. In this second screenshot, we are looking at a shot from Bad Moms, which was shot by Jim Deneau. Again, we're going to use the false color overlay in DaVinci Resolve. And we see that Mila Kunis's key and fill is around 60 IRE, which means we have a one to one lighting ratio, which is a zero stop difference. Another important thing to note is that they've let the background just go completely clipped at 100 IRE because it's bright red and yellow and orange, and that shouldn't be very hard to copy at all. So for this next shot, we have the small rig RC120D, and I'm bouncing this off of this huge five in one reflector that I got off of Amazon. And this is just bouncing some light back into my face. When I'm lighting for the shot, I try to have this light spread out across the reflector as evenly as possible so that it doesn't create any hot spots on any part of the image. And you don't want this reflector to be at an angle. So right now I'm just gonna angle it back towards my face so that it doesn't create any shadow or any contrast onto my face if we're going for that one-to-one -one contrast or lighting ratio. And once I have the right angle on the reflector, all I'm doing is just adjusting the intensity of the light. And so I'm just going to constantly be checking the false colors right here on my Atomos Ninja 5 monitor to make sure that everything is evenly exposed. So you see this pink spot right here. I want it to be pink on both sides because it's right around the 60 IRE marker. So make sure you check your false colors monitor in order to see whether or not you have the right amount of light hitting your face or your subject for the lighting ratio that you're going for. So right now I have the C70 at F2.8 and the ISO is at 800 for the native ISO of c 2 And we're also shooting at 4,900 Kelvin and the ND is at four stops of ND. And here's the final result after some color grading and some tweaking of the exposure levels. It's really, really close to how they shot it in Bad Moms. And that is how you use lighting ratios to find out exactly how much light you need or don't need. A couple things to note is that lighting ratios can't determine how hard or soft your light is, the direction is coming from, or the color of your light. Otherwise, lighting ratios is a great way to learn from some of the best cinematographers out there and see what type of lighting ratios they're working with, what are some commonalities and some patterns that you'll see emerge throughout some of these professionals' works. And once you figure out what type of lighting ratios you like the most, you can use it on every single shoot that you do. I never learned this in film school, so I hope this was helpful. And if it was, leave a like, make sure you subscribe for more videos just like this. I will be making more in the future. So until the next one, my name is Alex Chung and I'll see you later. Bye.